visit airpatrolnorth.ca. He is the most successful sports agent in history, Lee Steinberg, the real-life Jerry Maguire. Joe Tilly's great Canadian sports show, coming up! Our guest this week hails from Los Angeles, California. He is a lawyer and a sports agent. He is chair of Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. He's an author, movie consultant. He's represented over 300 athletes with over $4 billion in contracts. He has represented eight number one picks in the NFL, including 62 first rounders. He has represented athletes and coaches in football, baseball, basketball, hockey, boxing, golf, and more. He is inspiration for the movie Jerry Maguire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Lee Steinberg. Lee, great to see you, my friend. Thank you, Joe. Happy to be with you. Really uh, happy that you took this time to join us. Like Jerry Maguire, one of my favorite sports movies of all time, and you're the inspiration for that movie. Tell, uh, tell us how you... Uh, you were able to to land that position. What happened that uh, got you into that? Uh, in, in, you know, so, basically, it's your story. So Cameron Crowe, who is uh, a writer director, approached me back in 1993 and said he wanted to do a film that would center on a sports agent. And could he follow me around and and pick up atmosphere in that world? So he went to the '93 draft in New York, which I had Drew Bledsoe as the first uh, pick overall, and then he came up to the press conference with Bill Parcells in Boston and came to league meetings where I was showing off free agent players, came to a series of games, came to Pro Scouting Day at USC, uh, came to my Super Bowl parties, and I told him stories, lots and lots of stories. And he went off and wrote a brilliant script, and then... uh, as technical advisor, my job was to vet the script to make sure that if you're a real sports fan, you knew that the dialogue was not phony and the look on the set was not phony. And then I took a young actor named Cuba Gooding Jr. with me down to the uh-huh. Super Bowl in Phoenix, and I made him pretend he was a wide receiver client of mine. And he hung out with Desmond Howard and Amani Toomer. And um, I actually had to show the quarterback in the film, played by Jerry O'Connell, how to throw a spiral because he had gone to NYU (laughs) and they didn't have football there. So um, it's been over 25 years now, and I've never been able to walk into an airport or go out to dinner without someone running up to the table and saying those four words that start with show me the. Mighty, yes, indeed. So I have to ask you, did anybody actually ever say that to you and your clients or anybody else for that no. matter? That's, no. Um, what happened was Tim McDonald was a free agent defensive back, and he could go to any team he wanted to go to. So Cameron was following us around, and they went up into Tim's hotel room at the league meetings, and Lou Dobbs and Moneyline was on in the background. and. Cameron asked Tim, what are you searching for in this? And Tim gestured towards the screen. He said, I want someone to show me uh, winning finally. I want someone to show me respect. I want someone to show me a big contract. And Cameron wrote, show me the money. Oh, yeah. So it was right there for sure. It sure made sense in the movie. It was beautiful, beautiful line. No doubt about it. Okay, so what made you decide that you want to be a, a, a sports agent? You're, you're, you're a lawyer coming out of Berkeley, and, and you decided that you wanted to be a, a sports agent. Why? I really never made that decision. Um, there wasn't much of a field of sports representation when I started. Teams could put the phone down and say, we don't deal with agents. So there was no guaranteed right. Um, so... Undergrad, I was student body president, and uh, the governor of California was Ronald Reagan. And uh, every time we demonstrated, he cracked down, and I learned everything I needed to learn about the art of negotiating from governor, later President Reagan. And I was a dorm counselor in an undergraduate dormitory, 
and they moved the freshman football team into the dorm. And one of the players, the quarterback, Steve Bartkowski, became the very first player picked overall in the 1975 draft. And I had traveled the world for over a year after law school. And I came back and I'm choosing between jobs and Bartkowski asked me to represent him. So there I was, Joe, brimming with legal experience, never having <laughs> practiced the first pick in the draft. And, and we had leverage because there was a World Football League uh, competing and mm -hmm. Bartkowski signed the biggest contract of, uh, of all time. So there wasn't much of a field when I started and I sort of fell into it. My father had two core values I was raised with. One was treasure relationships, especially family. And the second was try to make a meaningful difference in the world and help people who couldn't help themselves. And when I saw that these athletes were the movie stars and celebrities in different communities, I thought, well, if they would retrace their roots and go back to the high school community, set up a scholarship fund, the church, boys and girls club, the collegiate institution, maybe retrofit some equipment or do a scholarship. And then at the pro level, the leading business figures, political figures, and community leaders on a charitable board. So a work done, just put the 200th single mother and their family into the first home they'll ever own. So it's athletes using that high profile. That became the philosophy. And uh, here we are 50 years later. Right. And, and you... That was something you passed on to all your clients. You all wanted them all to do charitable work. You wanted them all to be involved in the community and you wanted them to be role models. And, and, and that's what you did. So I grew up in Edmonton and uh, Warren Moon was one of my favorite players and one of your favorite clients as well. He did write, he wrote the forward in, in your book, uh, the book, The Agent, by the way, it's an awesome book. Just finished reading it uh, last night. Great book. Uh, and uh, he, Moon had, you know, that amazing college career. But you knew, he knew, he was not going to get the opportunity in the NFL. So you, you took him to Canada and brought him up to Canada. He played in the CFL, played phenomenally well. Tell us about your positioning to get him into the NFL, where he wanted to be eventually as a quarterback. Well, first of all, I loved Edmonton. and got really familiar with it because on that same team, I represented uh, Brian Kelly and Tommy Scott and Waddell Smith and Jim Germany. Oh, wow. So, How do you do? Uh, it, it was always yeah. fun. They kept winning and winning. And yeah, yeah. Um, so um, Warren had played rollout quarterback. So he was moving a lot instead of a, a, a cup pass. Drop back. Yeah. So it was pretty clear to us he would have been drafted, but he probably would have been drafted in a lower round because people kept trying to change his position. And he then. Um, wouldn't wouldn't play, and for Warren, participation was really key. So instead of waiting for the draft, we signed with the Edmonton Eskimos, and uh, because they had an amazing coach there, Hugh Campbell, and mm -hmm. um, and we knew he'd get great mentoring there. Um, so no one bothered to put a draft pick down on him because they saw that he was signed in Canada. And that meant that no NFL team had rights to him. So he played six years there. He played a long uh, time. He loved it up there. And, uh, but it came to the end, and his aspiration was to play in the NFL. Well, we timed it such that he would be done with his contract when you had a USFL, a CFL, and an NFL all competing for him. So it led to a bidding frenzy with. Uh, teams in Canada, teams in uh, the new USFL, and and there were a number of different NFL teams. So he took a tour. They hadn't had a real free agent in football at that critical position. So he signed the biggest contract in NFL history with the Houston uh, Oilers, but um, at that time, Houston Oilers. Right. And I think the contract lasted, I don't know, a couple of days or something like that. And then somebody else re renegotiated their contract just to top it by $100,000, but not to stay. Uh, <laughs> right. So uh, now, yeah, another interesting CFL signing you had is a guy named Joel Cowboy Parrish. He signed with the uh, Toronto Argos. 
Uh, and, and at the time, you mentioned that th this signing might have saved your career. Tell us a little bit about why that uh, was the case. Which, uh, oh, uh, with Joe Cowboy Parish? Um, right. It, it, um, I, I got to the point where I had done this the first year, but I didn't really understand it as a business. And I went out and recruited the second year and spent a lot of money. And um, I got to the point where I was, on fumes, breathing, e even though I had Bartkowski. So I thought, what am I going to do? So um, Bartkowski gave me a plane ticket. I flew to Georgia. I uh, drove down to a place called Douglas, Georgia, and there were these two offensive linemen, uh, Mike Moonpie Wilson and Joel Cowboy Parrish. And I ended up signing Joel, and they ended up signing a big contract, uh, both of them, with the Toronto Argonauts. And I got a check, and, and it saved me, and I stayed in business. And then what I did was adjust to learn how to profile the type of player that would be interested in us and, and researching their background. And when I started doing that, it was nothing but families that uh, I could bond with and the rate of signing high draft picks immediately accelerated. Right. And, and uh, you know, you, you ended up selling your company for over $120 million. So obviously uh, you got out of that right okay. <laughs> so that was through a Canadian company uh, called Asante, which was in Winnipeg. And um, so Canada keeps uh, weaving in and out of, my Popping wife. up, yeah, <laughs> right. So, uh, okay, so we, you, you go ahead. We signed Rick Rick Williams, and then I signed Ricky Williams with Toronto later. Ricky Williams, yes, for sure. I remember when Ricky came to town. I was working in Toronto, and yeah, Ricky came to town. Seemed like a nice guy, but uh, he had a bad rap, right? Ricky had a bad rap. Uh, it was just he had social anxiety disorder, and he would treat it by smoking marijuana. And now, mm -hmm. in retrospect. Um, uh, you can drive down the street here in, in uh, Newport Beach and, and buy marijuana. Uh, right. At that time, it, the point was it was a rule that you couldn't do it. So whether or not that made sense, um, you had to follow it. So well, eventually he got treated and he became a real happy camper. And, you know, he led the league in rushing one year, but there were two Ricky Williams. There was mm -hmm. a dedicated football player who showed up to camp on time, was dedicated, showed up to practices, threw his body around with reckless abandon. And then there was the other Ricky Williams away from football who was the searcher for higher truth, who got attracted to, mm -hmm. you know, Zen Buddhism and yoga and all sorts of things. So you had these two conflicting sides of his personality. You know, I, I just want to make a transition right there. You talk about searching for higher truth. And I know that uh, in, in reading the book and hearing about your hearing your story and actually watching TED Talk, and I know that you've been sober since 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously something close to my heart. I've been sober for a, a little while myself, uh, 31 years now. but. Um, Tell us about uh, what happened and, and what made you decide that uh, it was uh, important to, uh, to change your life. So I went through a period, I would had a pretty charmed life, and I went through a period where my two older sons were diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, which is an eye disease, so they're both legally blind. And then my father, who was a rock in my life, uh, died of, uh, of uh, esophageal cancer. And that really shook me up. And then we lost a home in a beach city. You get mold infestation. Mm. And so I felt powerless. And I felt like I couldn't save my father, couldn't save my boys, I couldn't save our house. And I turned to the wrong thing, to alcohol, to sort of numb it. And, um, and I eventually got to a point in 2010 where, where to deal effectively with any addiction, you have to break denial and realize you do have a problem that's out of control. So I came to that recognition in 2010 and um, 
Uh, I worked a 12-step program with a unique fellowship, and um, uh, here we are 14 years later, and uh, life is much better. Yeah, you know what? It, it's worth the effort, isn't it? Right to 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 uh, to do this one day at a time and 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 get to where you need to go. Well, you're amazing to have all those years. Oh my God! Uh, if I had all those years, I uh, uh, I'd be in my hundreds. Well, you know, I read your you know, read your story. I know your story, and it, it was the same thing for me. I tried many times to do it by myself. I just figured, why can't I do this by myself? I've got all this willpower to do other stuff. You know, I should be able to do this, but I keep trying and keep banging my head, and keep failing, keep failing, until I decided that it was time to ask for help and reach out and uh, and the help was there, and it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. So, uh, okay, uh, let's talk about your 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 clients. Uh, you know, you had uh, after Bartkowski, you had seven more number one overall picks. You have sixty two first rounders in all. Uh, how do you, how were you able to make that happen? How are you able to make that, uh, that stream continue? So I think the most important skill, Joe, in life is listening. It's being a, able to draw out another human being and create an atmosphere of trust around them. So they feel comfortable peeling back the layers of the onion and explaining to you who they really are at a deeper level and not what other people think they should be, not what they're embarrassed to say, but, but how do they feel about short-term economic gain and long-term economic security and family and spiritual considerations and uh, being a starter and being on a winning team or doing endorsements. If I can understand those priorities in another person, then I can bond with them at a deep level and put together a plan that takes them from the day they sign through the draft process in baseball or basketball or football and uh, uh, help them be a role model and trigger imitative behavior, make plans for second career. Um, and if, if I get a self-starter with a little bit of a good heart, um, they'll relate, relate to that. And, uh, what happened is we got to a week where I was one weekend representing virtually half the starting quarterbacks in the NFL. So we had 90 players in, in football and baseball. We had uh, about 60 in basketball, 17. Um, and, and, but it, it, it was understanding someone's deepest hopes and dreams and greatest anxieties and fears. And, if you can put yourself in another person's heart and mind and see the world the way they see it, it will help you in sales. It will help you in negotiating. It will help you in, in um, client service. It will help you in every aspect. Yeah, I can think of three words right now. Compassion, empathy, and integrity, right? And and it yeah. just seems like that, that that pretty much encompasses it all. Okay, let's talk about a contract that people are talking about right now. Shohei Otani. Uh, okay, so he's a finalist for the MLB's MVP award. He won it in 2021. Uh, he hit 304 this year with 44 homers, drove in 95 runs, led the majors with a 1.096 OPS, and on the mound he went 10 and five before he got hurt with a 3.14 ERA. 167 strikeouts, over 132 innings, leading the majors in batting average against and batting average on balls in play. He really seems to be the complete package, like something we've never seen before. Any? It really, it's been since Babe Ruth that we ever had a player excel at two different positions. It's not just that he can pitch and he can be an everyday hitter. It's that he does it at the absolute penultimate level. Um, the other thing about him, so so let's just say, Joe, had he not injured his arm, he was certainly on the way to sign the biggest contract in the history of sports. You know, whether it be 400 uh, million, 500 million, all guaranteed over many, many years. Um, the thing about it is he can't pitch next year. So mm. you're really 
instead of filling two roster spots with the same player, you, you'll get him as a designated hitter. And that's great. I mean, if that's all he did, he would uh, merit a huge contract. But they probably structured in a way where when he comes back to pitching, he's at an even more elevated level. The other thing about him is he's handsome. Um, he doesn't quite speak English yet, but he has a translator with him all the time. He's charismatic. He's exciting. He's a box office draw. So you can add this player and an extra 15,000 fans are going to come every time he pitches. And he, he's uh, great in the locker room. So um, it all sets up a situation. And, and he's a free agent. So you've got... Um, we anticipate that San Francisco and Los Angeles and San Diego and Chicago and New York and a whole series of teams. And you know that when you get people competing, competing against each other in, in a bid or a bargain, um, they'll, it produces amazing results because of the act of, of competition between different teams. So, um, He's going to sign, my guess is, the biggest contract of all time. And, um, and he, he had been pretty explicit that he was fine with the Angels, but he didn't like losing. And I live mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. 20, I've seen him pitch a bunch because I live 20 minutes from Anaheim Stadium. And uh, he's just charismatic and dominating. And one day, he could hit 65 homers. Um, mm -hmm. um, so you, it's going to be something epic. And um, uh, at the same time, he doesn't live a high-flying lifestyle. So um, Southern California fits him uh, a little more low-key, uh, uh, notwithstanding Hollywood, but Southern California, I could see him. Northern California, anywhere that you have a large Asian American population. It's just, um, it's a ticket boom. And that's just one aspect of him because he's probably the best player with both those capacities in baseball. Right. I just want to put up some numbers here that uh, Vic has prepared for some current contracts in Major League Baseball. Mike Trout's a leader, 12 years, 426 million. Mookie Betts, 12 years, 365. Aaron Judge, 360. Manny Machado, 350. Francisco Lindor, 341. Top pitchers would be Garrett Cole, nine years, 324. Uh, Max Scherzer, 43.3. Justin Verlander, 43.3 for one year. Uh, you know, based on these numbers, what do you think we can be looking at for Shohei? And I mean, you're a guy who has at the, you know, at that particular time, a few times have signed a player to the largest contract in sports history. And, and uh, so you know what we're talking about here. Where do you think we're, we're going to look at? What do you think we're going to look at as a number here? So again, I think that the fact he can't pitch next year because he'll be in recovery. Um, is the only limitation, but they can structure a contract. Um, uh, my, my guess is you looked at Mike Trout's figures, this will be higher. The only question is how many years, because um, Shohei didn't start in American baseball. He started in Japanese baseball. Hmm. He's already played a number of years, so he's not in his uh, early 20s. So it's how many years would you guarantee? But the point is the quality of those years, the mistake that has been uh, made in baseball many times on contract is that they pay players based on past performance and give them a monster multi-year contract instead of projecting how they're going to perform in the future. But he's got exemplary work habits. Uh, all pitchers have arm problems. Um, so, you know, will he get 10 years? I mean, that would make him probably in his early forties, but, um, but it's, it's going to be, it, it will exceed all of the numbers that you had on that chart. So I want to throw an idea at you because we have, uh, you know, the Blue Jays who bring in about 44,000 people a, a game. They've got a very large Asian population in Southern Ontario. 
uh, you know, so you talk, you, you tick off that box as well. They've got a couple of gold lovers. They just re, uh, they took the option on, on uh, Matt Chapman. So, you know, he'll, when he is pitching, say, I mean, you're going to have to bite the bullet for a year, as you said, but after that, you know, uh, they have a pretty good rotation uh, and as it is and, and adding Otani to that piece after next year would be all right. Uh, that one thing they are certainly missing is offense. Does this not seem like it might be a fit? It could be. People always consider the tax situation in, in Canada when they're uh, structuring uh, a, a contract. Um, but look, Toronto is one of the five great cities in North America, and it's got everything um, that you want. My brother went to uh, grad school there, um, and I've signed a number of players, and, and amazing lifestyle, great diversity. Um, uh, you know, it, it's right up there with New York and Los Angeles and Chicago and San Francisco. And um, so I think they could make a unique pitch uh, to him. If, if they ever were to sign him, they would sell out every game because right. he's that amazing. So this is, again, I want to make the point that there are very few players who are major box office draws. The team is, but there's, uh, back when I was a kid, there was a pitcher in Los Angeles named Sandy Koufax. Mm -hmm. And every time he pitched, they had about 17,000 extra fans. Uh and uh, Otani's exciting. He's colorful. He's uh, gifted. And uh, so you... Most of us would go buy a ticket at a premium price just to say that you've seen him play. Right. Yeah, he's worth the price of admission. No doubt about that. So what kind of effect is this contract ultimately going to have on baseball and sports in general? I don't think that we look at those things in terms of comparative contracts and who's a comp or a comparable. There is no comp to him because there's no one else who who uh, plays two positions at the highest level uh, and has all the rest of it going. So not that much uh, uh, impact because he's clearly an outlier. He's clearly one of a kind. No doubt about that. Okay, so Lee, uh, I know you've done uh, you've done a tremendous amount of charity work. Uh, you did a TED talk a few years back where you talked about some of the projects that you and your clients have worked on. And, and let's, let's roll that, Vic. I just want to listen to uh, So when we had Lennox Lewis, the heavyweight boxing champion, cut a public service announcement that said, real men don't hit women, it could do more to change the thought process in rebellious adolescents towards domestic violence than a thousand authority figures could do. Or when I had Oscar De La Hoya and Steve Young cut a PSA that said prejudice is foul play, it could make uh, the same sort of impact. I had a scare when Oklahoma City came and I saw nascent skinheads and racists starting to move in this country and I thought there's the they, but who's doing anything about it? So I went to the Anti-Defamation League and set up a program where we trained 30 people, young doctors, lawyers, businessmen, in each of the biggest cities, the 30 biggest cities across the country, in how to intervene in crisis situations, how to do intelligence work uh, for police departments, how to go into school systems and promote concepts that enhanced an appreciation for the cultural heritage and operated against prejudice. So a lot of what you talked about then, obviously, uh, still issues today. But what what is it? Uh, what what kind of issues or main causes, let's say, are, are you working on today? So the environment's really important to me, and I've designed a program that I did a while back, but just have to revisit, called the Sporting Green Alliance where you take sustainable technology in solar, wind, recycling, resurfacing, and, uh, and uh, uh, solar, and 
you install it in the stadia arena and practice fields to drop carbon emissions and energy costs and to create an educational platform where millions of fans can go and see a waterless urinal or a solar panel and think about how do I put these into my own business or my own life. Another cause is bullying where kids get picked on and their life gets uh, stultified and, and uh, because of some extraneous, they've got a hair lip, they are too fat, they're a certain race, whatever. And if you can get pro athletes working with high school athletes to stop the mm. uh, intolerance and put their arm around a kid that's got problems, you can change the culture of that high school really quickly. I've also found a whole set of new healing modalities that are a product of advances in biomed, and they can help players in the critical moments at the end of every game. Um, so, so much of it comes down to the very end. So could we stimulate energy, endurance, and productivity at that, that level? Second of all, could we bring back players from injury quicker? And so it's hyperbaric oxygen, stem cells, blue, white, and red light. It's NanoV and a couple cognitive uh, uh, treatments. Um, and uh, they're also um, have efficacy for all of us. So they've been shown to extend mm -hmm. lifespan, greater health and the rest of it. So I've been taking these concepts to teams and using them with uh, peers of mine. And, and uh, I think that we'll never look at health the same. I can think, I, just getting back to the bullying thing again, is like the cyberbullying thing is such a problem. And, and uh, you know, people can have fictitious names and hide behind a computer screen and, and send out all kinds of crap, you know. And, and, and that, it, it, it maddens me, but, you know, it's one of those things where, where, yeah, for players to come out and speak about that too, right? Like it's, it's uh, that that's another part of it that I think it's it, it's so out there right now. So, and uh, listen, I, I want to say that uh, it, it's it's been awesome ha having you on the show. Before I go, I'd like to ask you this question: uh, it's, What's the best advice you've ever received? Um, so my father used to say, when you see a problem in the world and um as small as picking up a piece of trash off the carpet or as big as racism or climate change the tendency that people have is to wait for someone else to address the problem they the amorphous they older people political figures the rest right of he, he would say son there's the problem you could wait forever. The they is you. You are the they. So it gives you a sense of responsibility for and to be your brother's keeper and to to try to take action on issues that are uh, important. I mean, we have a wave of anti-Semitism going across this country that is frightening. And um, uh I'm going to be working on plans to, to, to address that. But you can't just sit around and wait for someone else to do it. You have to try to get involved yourself. Yep. See if you can make a difference right now, right here, all the people around you. Like, I mean, it's, you know, when, when I get, uh, for example, I get an email from somebody that I find, uh, you know, to be racist or sexist or something like that. I can, I have an option right now. I can, I can, you know, kill it in my email or I can write somebody back and tell them I don't appreciate that. But it's, it's, it's taking a stand and, and making sure that uh, we do what we can in the moment because we all, we all can make a difference. Right. Right. Lee, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. It's been amazing and uh, loved having you on. It, it's great. Thank you, Joe. Hi to everybody in Toronto and Canada. All right. Thanks, my friend. More sports when we come back. What our kids breathe matters more than ever. But how can you tell if a school is safe to breathe in? 
If you could actually see what's in the air, <coughs> would you keep them home? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible, ensuring schools are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world, with local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more. Their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. And we want to thank all the folks who make the show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all-around great people. We highly recommend them. Thank you for your support of Canadian and local sports. A reminder that the show is available on iTunes, Spotify, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Cast, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingle TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, check out our show on YouTube. All of the past great shows are there. Clips, shorts, lots of good stuff to like and share. Like and subscribe. It is free. Thanks once again to Lee Steinberg for being on the show. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ryan Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-686. 5678. Air quality at work matters more than ever, but there's no way to tell if the space is safe to breathe in. If you could actually see what's in the air, would you even come to work? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible. Ensuring workplaces are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. Rooted in 60 years of tradition, Sleepy Hollow is a private golf club with a friendly community of members just minutes from Toronto. With mature trees and rolling fairways, Sleepy Hollow provides a challenging and enjoyable experience for passionate golfers. Enjoy great golf, amazing dining, and a picturesque patio second to none. Visit SleepyHollowCountryClub.com. Hi there, I'm Joe Tilly. Are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? Next March, during the enchanting cherry blossom season, join me and my wife for an unforgettable two-week journey to Japan and South Korea. In Japan, you'll experience the magic of the season as we visit the stunning Osaka Castle against the backdrop of cherry blossoms. Feed the adorable Sika deer at Nara Park, glide through picturesque landscapes on the famed bullet train, cruise on Lake Kawaguchi, and witness the awe-inspiring view of Mount Fuji. Relax in natural hot springs and savor a delightful Fuji dinner banquet while dressing in traditional robes. And of course, we'll dive into Tokyo's cutting-edge technology scene. In Korea, dress in elegant hanbok attire and step back in time at Changdok Gong Palace. Wander through Andong Village, a true glimpse into Korea's rich heritage. Delight your taste buds with the flavors of Korean barbecue. We'll even visit the DMZ area to get a glimpse of mysterious North Korea. And guess what? 
This incredible journey is all yours for just $54.99, all inclusive with direct flights from Vancouver or $58.99 from Toronto. Book now to unlock up to an extra $1,700 in upgrades and savings. Let's make some memories. Let's explore. Let's travel. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com.